Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video, I will show you how to insert an image in Excel. In some cases, the numerical or text data in cells might not be enough to understand the data completely. In such cases, adding images and charts help provide visual cues to the reader to understand and ascertain the data easily. In this video, I will show you how to insert images in Excel. You'll also learn how to insert an image into Excel and lock them to the corresponding cell. When you want to insert an image in Excel, you cannot copy and paste it into the Excel sheet or cell as we do in Microsoft Word. However, you can insert an image in Excel in three simple ways. Using this option, you can insert images that are stored on your local drive from the stock image repository, in the cloud, or even from the internet. To insert an image, first, select any cell. Navigate to Insert. Click on the drop-down from Illustrations. Again, click on the drop-down from Pictures. Clicking on the Picture drop-down shows you three ways you can insert an image in Excel. If you want to insert an image into your Excel sheet from your computer or other computers you are connected to, click on this device. Another way to insert images in Excel is from Stock Images. Stock Images in Excel is an image repository that contains images that are copyrighted by Microsoft and available for personal and professional use. Using the Online Pictures option, you can add images from the internet powered by the Bing search engine. Once you have added the image to the chart, you can move and resize the chart using the anchor points. If you want to make additional customizations to the image, you can use the Picture Format ribbon to adjust the color grading change the image style and size, and align the image depending on your preference. You can also insert an image into a cell, snap it to its borders, and make the image a part of the cells like a text. This is a prerequisite step before you insert the image into the cell. First, make space for the images by extending the cells, rows, and columns based on the size of the image you want to showcase. Then insert the image or images using the above mentioned method. Once the images are inserted, you can resize each image using the anchor points and move them to their respective cells. The inserted images are not linked to the cell. As a result, any operation you perform on the cells such as selecting, filtering, and hiding will not apply to the images. To lock the image to the cell, first right click on the image and click on Format Picture. This opens up the Format Picture pane on the right side of the worksheet. Click on the Size and Properties button. Under the Properties drop-down, click on Move and Size with Cells. This locks the image to the cell. Now, when you copy, move, filter, or hide the cells, the corresponding image also gets copied, moved, filtered, or hidden, and hidden along with the cell. That is all, everyone! Inserting images into an Excel worksheet is an integral feature that is widely used and will help the user understand the data easily and effectively. In this video, we saw how to insert images in Excel in three easy ways. We also saw how to insert images into an Excel cell and lock them with the cell. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video, I will show you how to create a waterfall chart in Excel. One way to represent the positive and negative rise and fall of values in a table is by using the waterfall chart. To create a waterfall chart using the data, first select the data. Navigate to Insert. Under the Charts section, click on the Waterfall Chart. This populates the waterfall chart in the center of the sheet. From the chart, you can see that the increases and decreases in profit are indicated in the form of steps, waterfalls, or bridges. You can also make additional changes to the chart as per your preferences. When you populate a waterfall chart, only the data at the beginning and the end starts from the axis. To make the bars start from the x-axis, double-click the particular data points to open the Format Data Points pane to the right of the sheet. Under the Series option, check the checkbox for Set as Total. This gives you the waterfall chart. If you are using older versions of Microsoft Excel, you might not be able to directly populate the chart from the Insert option. 
In such cases, you will have to create additional columns for the data points. Let us insert three columns in between the original values. The idea behind creating three columns is that the base column will contain the data as an initial point. The other two columns will contain the positive increasing values and negative decreasing values respectively. First, let us set up the decrease column. From the sales flow column, enter only the negative values in the decrease column and fill the rest of the places with zeros. Another easy way to separate data is to use the IF formula and press ENTER. Now, you can use the drag handle to apply the formula to the remaining cells. In the same way, enter the formula in the increase column and use the fill handle to apply the formula to the other cells. Next, to fill the base column, leave the first cell and enter the formula to add the base and increase value and subtract the decrease values. This acts as the initial point. Now, press enter and use the drag handle to fill and apply the formula to the remaining cells. Now that we have all the data in the columns ready, let us now get ready to create the waterfall chart. To create a waterfall chart, select the data except for the sales flow column. Navigate to insert and insert the stacked column chart. This populates the chart in the center of the sheet. Now, let us transform the stacked column chart into a waterfall chart. Right click on any data and select Format Data Series. Under the Format Data Series pane, click on the Fill and Line icon. Under the Fill section, click on No Fill, and under the Border section, click on No Line. You change the chart style from the shortcut Customize buttons presented next to the chart, or you can use the Chart Design ribbon to change the overall layout of the chart. That is all, everyone. In this video, we saw how to create a waterfall chart in Excel in two easy ways. Choose the method that suits your purpose the best. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video, I will show you how to convert Excel to a CSV file. When you create, add, or download data into Excel and save them, the data will be saved as a Microsoft Excel worksheet file with a .xls or .xlsx extension. You might sometimes want to convert the Excel file to a CSV file. Let us see how. One common and straightforward method to convert an Excel file to a CSV file is by using the Save As method. First, open the Excel workbook which you want to convert to a CSV file format. Navigate to the File tab. Click on Save As. This opens the Save As pane to the right. Click on More Options to specify the storage location, name, and format of the file. In the Save As Type dropdown, choose any of the CSV formats. In this case, let us choose CSV, Delimited. Click on Save. The file will be saved in the desired location. When you save the Excel file as CSV, some of the features might be lost. Excel throws a warning right away as a ribbon. If you want to preserve all the features, save the file back in Excel format. Else, click on Close or Don't Show Again. When you open the CSV file in any other application, it can be seen that each data is separated by a comma. Also, the file will lack any formatting, symbols, objects, and shapes from the original worksheet. When you convert the file as comma delimited type, any character other than the ASCII characters will be lost. To avoid this, you can choose to export the file as CSV UTF-8 instead of using CSV comma delimited. In the same way, navigate to File. Click on Save As and select more options from the Save As pane. This opens the Save As dialog box. In the dialog box, select the names and storage location and in the Save As type dropdown CSV UTF-8 comma delimited. Click Save and click OK for the pop-up. Now open the CSV file. You can see all the symbols and special characters outside of ANSI characters. That is all folks. Converting Excel to CSV file format helps in the easy transfer of data and can contain data related to different fields. In this video we saw how to convert an Excel file to a CSV file in simple steps. Thank you.
Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video, I'll show you how to use the match function in Excel. Excel consists of a variety of functions that help in performing a variety of operations at ease. If you want to find the position of a particular value when using Excel tables or pivot tables, you can use the match function. The main purpose of the match function is that this function is used to search any data in an array of cells and returns the relative position of that particular data. The syntax of the match function takes three arguments. The lookup value, the lookup array, and the match type. The lookup value is a mandatory field. This argument denotes the value you want to search in the array. The lookup array is also a mandatory field. This denotes the data array or the cell range from which you want the function to look for the lookup value. Match type is an optional field and can take only the values negative 1, 0, and 1. This field defines how you want the function to search the lookup value in the lookup array. When the match type argument is 0, the match function searches for and finds the first occurring value in the array exactly equal to the lookup value. When the match type value is negative 1, the function finds the exact or the smallest value greater than or equal to the lookup value. However, when using this match type, make sure the array is sorted in descending order. When the match type is value 1, the match function finds the exact or largest value lesser than or equal to the lookup value. However, the values in the lookup array must be arranged in ascending order. Since this is an optional field, the default value will be 1 even if you mention it in the formula or not. Let us now see how to use the match function in Excel with the match type 0. To find the exact match for the particular value, first choose a destination cell. Enter the formula equals match and pass the arguments as the value, cell range, and the match type. Press enter. This gives you the position of the search data. That is all everyone. The match function can be a very helpful tool that helps you find the relative position of the value. This can help find, replace, or make any changes to the data. In this video, we saw how to use the match function in Excel along with its use cases. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to hide formulas in Excel. When you enter a formula in Excel, the formula that pertains to the cell always shows up on the formula bar. Sometimes, you might not want the formula to show up on the formula bar when you select the cell. Let us see how to hide formulas from showing up in Excel. So, without further ado, let us get right into it. One way to hide the formulas from showing up in the formula bar is by protecting the cells and making them uneditable. To hide the formulas and make the cells uneditable, first select the cells from which you don't want the formula to show up. After selecting the cells, right click on the selected cells and click on Format Cells. This opens up a Format Cells dialog box. Go to the Protection tab and check the checkbox for Hidden. Click OK. Once you have hidden the cells, navigate to Review. Under the Protect section, click on Protect Sheet. Once you click on Protect Sheet, a dialog box appears. If the sheet is confidential to you, enter a password. You can unprotect the sheet only by using this password. In this case, let us leave the password text box blank. Make sure the checkbox for Protect Worksheet and Contents of Locked Cells is checked. The below two checkboxes for Select Lock Cells and Select Unlock Cells are checked. Selecting these options only lets the user click on cells, but they are detained from doing any operation on the cells. Click OK. This hides the formula for showing up on the formula bar. When you click on any of the cells, you cannot see the formulas. In addition to hiding the formulas, this method also protects the sheet from being edited or altered. If you have a vast amount of data in your worksheet and cannot specifically identify which of the cells have the formula, you can use the upcoming method. This method also leaves some of the cells editable to get any inputs from the end user. 
First, select all the cells by pressing Ctrl plus A. Navigate to Home. Click on the drop-down from Find and Select, and click on Go to Special. This opens up the Go to Special dialog box. In the dialog box, select Formulas and make sure all the checkboxes under the Formulas header are checked. Click OK. This step helps Excel identify the cells and formulas and selects them. Now, again, open the Format Cells dialog box by right-clicking and selecting Format Cells or use the keyboard shortcut key Control plus 1. In the Format Cells dialog box, under Protection, check the checkbox for both Locked and Hidden. Click OK. After this, navigate to Review. Under the Protect section, click on Protect Sheet. Enter the password to protect the sheet and check the checkboxes for Protect Worksheet and Content for Locked Cells. Select the Locked and Unlocked Cells and click OK. This locks only the cells with formulas, whereas the rest of the cells remain editable. That is all everyone. In this video, we saw how to hide formulas in Excel without hiding the formula bar by protecting the cells and making them uneditable. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video, I will show you how to remove tables in Excel. When you create a table with the data, Excel automatically adds some formatting of its own. However, in some cases, you might need to remove the table formatting or even the whole table. Let us first see how to remove the table formatting in Excel. To remove the table formatting, first, select the table. Navigate to Table Design. And under the Table Style section, click on the More drop-down. Scroll down and click on Clear from the drop-down. This only removes the formatting of the table, but the data, filters, and other elements remain in the table format. Now, navigate to Home. Under the Editing section, click on the drop-down from the Clear and select Clear Formats. This removes the drop-down from the headers and converts the table to normal range data. In the above-mentioned method, we saw how to remove the formatting in a table. However, in some cases, you might have to delete or remove the whole table. If there is no need for an Excel table, you can easily convert a table to normal data using this method. First, select the Excel table that you want to convert to normal data. Navigate to Table Design. Under the Tools section, click on Convert to Range. You can also right-click on the table and click on the Extend option from Table and select Convert to Range. Excel throws a warning pop-up asking, do you want to convert the table to a normal range? Click Yes. This instantly converts the table to normal data. You can also see that, though the table is removed, the formatting style remains. So, before you convert the table to a normal data range, it's always better to remove the table formatting using the above method and then remove the table. There's another easy way to remove the formatting in the cells. First, select the cells you want to remove the formatting from. Then, navigate to Home. Under the Editing section, click on the drop-down from Clear and select Clear Formats. This deletes the formatting of the selected cells and turns the data back to the default formatting. Additionally, you can also use the Clear button to remove tables in Excel. This method acts as a hard reset option. This method can be used when you want to clear the formatting of the cells in addition to the data in the table. To clear the table along with the data, first select the table. Navigate to Home. Under the Editing section, click on the drop-down Clear and select Clear All. This removes the table, including the data, and returns the blank cells. That is all, everyone. Excel offers you the flexibility to change or even remove the formatting of the table to suit your needs. Additionally, you can also delete the whole table depending on your choice. In this video, we saw how to remove tables and formatting in Excel in an easy way. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to insert a new worksheet in Excel. A worksheet is a space in a workbook where you can store data. With the help of multiple worksheets, 
you can store different types of data in a single workbook. This will help you retrieve and share data easily. One easy way to insert a new worksheet in Excel is by clicking on the plus icon next to the worksheet name. This inserts a new worksheet towards the right of the existing worksheet. Another way to insert a new worksheet in Excel is by using the Worksheet tab. Right-click on any of the existing worksheets and select Insert. This opens the Insert dialog box. Under the General tab, select Worksheet and click OK. One advantage of this method is that this method gives you the option to choose between types of worksheets or worksheet templates. This inserts a new worksheet next to the current worksheet. Using the shortcut keys is also another easy, quick, and efficient way. To insert a new worksheet in Excel, hold the Shift key and press the F11 function key. This inserts a new worksheet. There is another way to insert a new worksheet in Excel. Hold the Alt and Shift keys and press the F1 key. Both these methods insert a new worksheet to the right of the existing worksheet. Another way to insert a new worksheet in Excel is from the Home main menu. Navigate to the Home main menu in the Excel ribbons. Under the Cells section, click on the drop-down from Insert and select the Insert Sheet to insert a new worksheet in your Excel workbook. All the above methods only insert one sheet at a time. However, if you want to insert multiple worksheets in a single go, you can use a VBA code. To use the VBA code to insert a new worksheet, first enable the Developer tab. In the Developer tab, click on Visual Basic. The Microsoft Visual Basic for Application window opens. Click on the View main menu and select Immediate Window. In the Immediate Window, enter the VBA code, denoting the number of worksheets you want to insert, and press Enter. You can see the worksheets added in the Project pane on the left. Now, close the VBA window. That is all, everyone. Inserting a new worksheet in Excel can help you keep all the data in one place. This, in turn, makes the data handling more efficient and organized. In this video, we saw how to insert a new worksheet in Excel in five easy ways. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to reduce the size of Excel files. When the data is added and its complexity increases, the size of the Excel file also increases. Excel files range from a few kilobytes to a few megabytes. The huge amount of data associated with an Excel file tends to make it slow and hazy. Also, a vast number of files with greater sizes make it very difficult to share. In such cases, you'll need to reduce the size of an Excel file. Let us now see how to reduce the Excel file size. Let us get right into it. One way to reduce the Excel file size is by saving the Excel file as a binary spreadsheet. To save the current file in binary format, navigate to File. Click on Save As. Enter the file name and location. Finally, select the Excel Binary Workbook option from the Save As pane and click on Save. This saves the Excel file as a binary workbook. Compressing images in Excel Worksheet is another way to reduce the Excel file size. To compress an image, first select the image and navigate to the Picture Format main menu ribbon. Under the Adjust section, click on Compress Pictures. This opens the Compress Pictures dialog box. You can select the resolution you want from the list of resolutions. The higher the resolution, the greater the size will be. Choose the resolution that suits your purpose, or you can also select the Use Default Resolution. And click OK. The resolution and editing factors play a major role in determining the size of the Excel file. So, by reducing or eliminating those factors, we can reduce the Excel file size. To reduce the image resolution and the file size, navigate to File, and click on Options. From the Excel Options dialog box, click on Advanced. Scroll down to the Image Size and Quality section. From the drop-down, select the workbook you want to implement the changes. Check the checkbox for discard editing data. 
Uncheck the checkbox for Do Not Compress Images in the file. Change the default resolution. When you select High Fidelity, the images will have the highest resolution, but they will significantly increase the file size. If your spreadsheet has pivot tables, then any changes you make to the pivot table get stored in the pivot table cache. You can also reduce the file size by removing the pivot table cache. To remove the pivot table cache, first, click on any cell in the pivot table. Then, navigate to the Pivot Table Analyze main menu ribbon. Under the Pivot Table section, click on Options. Click on the Data tab in the Pivot Table Options dialog box. Under the Pivot Table Data section, uncheck the checkbox for Save Source Data with File. Check the checkbox for Refresh Data when opening the file. Externally compressing a file also helps bring down the file size. To compress a file, Right-click on the file and select Compress to Zip File. This instantly compresses the current file. You can then share a large number of files easily and the end user can extract and get back to the original file. Watch is an efficient feature in Excel that lets you expect calculations, formulas, and data. However, enabling it takes up considerable space and makes the file size a bit large. To remove the watches, navigate to the Formula Main Menu ribbon and click on the Watch Window. This opens the Watch Window dialog box. In the dialog box, select the watches you want to delete and click on Delete Watch. Additionally, you can also reduce the file size by removing any unnecessary data like images, worksheets, formatting, formulas, and hyperlinks. That is all everyone. In this video, we saw how to reduce the Excel file size. Excel files with lesser file sizes facilitate easy sharing and transfer of the files. In addition, they also load faster and are easier to download. Thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to merge Excel files. Excel offers you the ability to combine data from multiple worksheets or workbooks into one single workbook, which makes it easy for you to search for data, decreases file clutter, and facilitates easy sharing of files that in turn increases the efficiency of your work. Let us see how to merge Excel files from different workbooks into a single worksheet. Just by copying the data from the sheet into one book and pasting the data into another book, you can consolidate all the data into a common workbook. To copy all the data, first, select all the data from the worksheet. Right-click on the selected data and click Copy or press Ctrl plus C. Now, open the workbook where you want to consolidate the data. Navigate to a new sheet and press Ctrl plus V or click on the Paste button from the Home menu. This way, you can copy and paste any number of worksheets into different workbooks and consolidate the data into a single Excel file. Another method is to copy the sheets together and copy or move them to another workbook. First, open the workbook to which you want to merge all the files. This will act as the destination. Then, open the source workbook from which you want to move or copy. To copy or move the books, first, select the sheets. Once you select the sheets, they will appear in bold. Now, right-click and select Move or Copy. This opens the Move or Copy dialog box. From the To Book drop-down, select the workbook to which you want to move the sheets. In the Before Sheet section, select Move to End. Additionally, Check the checkbox for Create a Copy if you want to create a copy of the selected sheets onto a new workbook. This leaves the data in the source workbook intact. Click OK. This will copy the selected worksheets onto a new workbook. There might be some instances where you would want to merge Excel files into a single worksheet. In such cases, you can use the below mentioned methods to arrive at the desired result. Using Power Query, you can merge Excel files into a single workbook and help alter the data with ease. When using this method, store all the files you want to combine into a single folder. 
Also, take precautions to make sure the data are structured and in the same format as each other. Now, open the Excel workbook in which you want to combine all the other workbooks. Navigate to the Data tab. Under the Get and Transform Data section, click on the drop-down from Get Data. Click in From File and select From Folder. A dialog box opens. Select the folder which contains the files you want to merge and click OK. This inserts all the data from the selected folder and shows you a preview of the selected files. Click on the drop down from Combine and select Combine and Load. This in turn opens the Combined Files dialog box. From the Sample File drop down, select any file and select any sheet under the Display Options parameters. This file will act as a template based on which the data from other sheets will be formatted. You can see the preview of the data in the corresponding sheet. Check the checkbox for skip files with errors if you want Power Query to ignore the errors. Once you have verified the data, click OK. After you click OK, the data from the workbooks are combined and reflected in a new sheet. Using the Consolidate option in the Data section, you can combine multiple worksheets into one. First, open a new worksheet in a new workbook. This will act as the destination where all the files will be merged. Navigate to Data. Under the Data Tools section, click on the Consolidate button. This opens the Consolidate dialog box. Since we will be adding data one after the other, Select Sum from the Function drop-down. In the References text box, enter the cell range you want to consolidate and click on Add. You can add data from different worksheets in different workbooks by using the up arrow or by clicking on the Browse button. Once you click on Add, the references will be added to the All References tab. From here, you can remove any references you don't want to consolidate using the Delete button. If you want the consolidated data to be dynamic, i.e. the data in the destination changes when the source is changed, click on the checkbox for Create Links to Source Data. Finally, click OK. This consolidates the data from the selected source references into a single sheet. You can use the plus and minus buttons on the left of the sheet to view the data. Another effective way to merge Excel files is by changing their format and then reverting to their original format. The first step is to convert the two Excel files into CSV format. To do that, open the Excel file, navigate to File, click on Save As. Click on More Options. This opens the Save As dialog box. Select the storage location and rename the file. Under the Save As type drop-down, Select the CSV, comma delimited. Click on Save. This saves the Excel files .xlsx in the .csv format. The next step is to use the command prompt to merge files. While using this method, make sure you have placed the files you want to combine in the same folder. Now, right-click in the empty space and select Open in Terminal. By default, Windows opens PowerShell Editor. Click on the small drop-down next to the New tab or press Ctrl plus Shift plus 2 to open the Command Prompt. This opens the Command Prompt Editor. In the Command Prompt window, enter the command CD space the folder path in double quotes. Press Enter. This shows that any command you enter is specified to the current folder. Enter the command in the prompt and press Enter. Once the execution is complete, you can see the names of the workbooks combined in the command prompt. In the folder, you can see the combined CSV file. Now, you can convert the CSV file back to an Excel file. That is all, everyone. In this video, we saw how to merge files in Excel in five proven ways. Thank you. Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial from Simon Says It. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to use split screen in Excel. 
Excel only allows you to view more or less 28 rows and 23 columns. But what if you have hundreds of rows and columns and want to compare them? In such a case, Excel allows you to split screens to enable you to visually compare any data. When you use the split screens in Excel, each pane grants you the ability to independently scroll and compare the data. This helps you to view each part of the same worksheet independently. Let us now see how to use the split screen in Excel. First, let us see how to split the screen horizontally and compare the data. Select the first cell or the entire row where you want the split to occur. Always remember that the split always happens above the selected cell or row. Navigate to View in the main menu. Under Window, click on Split. This splits the Excel sheet into two parts, the upper and the lower. You can see that there are two scroll bars for individual panes. You can use them to scroll the sheet independently and compare the data. You can also change the size of the pane by moving the split bar up or down. Place the mouse pointer on the gray bar to turn the normal pointer into a double-sided pointer. Click, drag, and drop where you want to position the split bar. In the same way, you can split the Excel sheet vertically. To split the screen vertically, select the column or the first cell of the column you want to split. Navigate to View. Under Window, select Split. This splits the sheet vertically. The partition can be seen by a gray line. Always remember that the split always happens to the left of the selected column. In most cases, you might only have to split the data horizontally or vertically to compare the data. However, in some cases, you might have to compare the data simultaneously. In those cases, there is a need for a four-way split. To split the screen both horizontally and vertically, just select the cell you want the split to occur. In this case, when selecting the cell, the split occurs to the left and above the cell. In the same way, navigate to View in the main menu. Under Window, select Split. The four-way split allows you to scroll the sheet in a horizontal and vertical direction independently. Until now, we have seen how to split the cells. Once you have viewed and compared the values, you might want to unsplit the screens to their original format. To unsplit the screen, navigate to View. Under Windows, click on Split. Make sure that you are working with an already split screen. This removes the split and reverts the Excel screen to its original format. That is all, everyone. In this video, we saw how to split screen in Excel. Using Excel Split Screen provides an easy way to view compare, and contrast values that will be hard to find when there are large amounts of data. Thank you. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.